<coughs> Good morning, everybody. <coughs> um, the digitization of the 1911 census for Dublin has been a great success. <coughs> that it is free to all and searchable by individual as well as address ensures that it is an extraordinary resource that facilitates historians in approaching a huge range of subjects and research questions with fresh data and from fresh perspectives. One su such subject, which has received minimal attention to date, is the attempt by some Irish suffragists to organise a boycott of the Census of Ireland in 1911. The digitisation of the census returns ensures that we now have a much better idea as to the actions of the suffragists on the night of the 1911 census and the reactions of the authorities. As in Canada, organised female suffragism emerged in Ireland in the 1870s. The first such organisation was founded in Belfast, but perhaps the most important was the Dublin Women's Suffrage Society founded in 1876, which became the Irish Women's Suffrage and Local Government Association. These suffragist organisations adopted the standard methods of lobby groups. They held meetings, they pro propagandised, they wrote letters, they organised petitions, they pestered politicians. By the early years of the 20th century, they had made progress. The suffrage issue was by then consistently before the public, but the suffragists had not yet convinced the establishment to legislate for the women's right to vote. At this point, a new phenomenon emerged, militant suffrage groups whose members came to be referred to as suffragettes. In Britain, the most famous of these was the Women's Social and Political Union, which was led by the Pankhursts, Emmeline and her daughters. Between 1905 and 1914, the WSPU was at the forefront of a steadily escalating campaign of militancy. Disruption of political meetings and public protests gave way to the breaking of windows in public buildings, politicians' homes, shops, and then to arson, chemical attacks, and bombings. Around 1,000 women and 40 men were jailed in the UK in the years 1905 to 1914 for militant activity in the cause of female suffrage. Uh, initially, the WSPU did not organise in Ireland, and Irish suffragism remained comparatively moderate. But in November 1908, Hannah Sheehy Skeffington and Margaret Cousins, along with their feminist husbands, Francis Sheehy Skeffington and James Cousins, founded the Irish Women's Franchise League. Um, these are the Sheehy Skeffingtons, and this is Margaret Cousins. Um, the IWFL did not immediately embark upon militant activity. Rather, gradually, a vanguard of committed activists emerged. The first step towards militant action was taken in October 1910 when Sheehy Skeffington and Hilda Webb heckled Augustine Burrell, Chief Secretary of Ireland, at a meeting in Greystones, County Wicklow. In November 1910, six IWFL members, including Margaret Cousins, were imprisoned in England when they participated in protests organised by the WSPU. They broke the windows in Burrell's London home by throwing potatoes through them and were then later arrested when breaking windows on Downing Street. Soon after this, the census of 1911 provided an occasion to suffragists to demonstrate their discontent at home in Ireland. As James Cousins put it, the census was a prime opportunity of throwing metaphorical spanners in official machinery. As with suffrage militancy in general, a boycott of the census was not an idea indigenous to Ireland. The proposal to boycott the census emerged in Britain, where, as in Ireland, the census was fixed for the 2nd of April. This campaign was led by the WSPU and another militant organisation, the Women's Freedom League. Operating under the slogan, No Vote, No Census, these groups announced that as women were not treated as full citizens, their members would not fill out the census form as required by law. It was quite late in March before Irish suffragists began to reveal their final, final attitudes to the proposed protest. At a public meeting by the IWFL on the 28th of March, five days before census night, a Miss Tatlow publicly justified a boycott of the census, arguing that it was, quote, the government that forced them into their proposal, proposed action with regard to the census by failing to keep promises to legislate for female suffrage. When a correspondent to the Irish Times and Freeman's Journal, writing under the name Archibim, complained that, quote, the census evasion is an attempt to diminish the value of an undertaking of immense importance and social value, and asked, <clears throat> will the Irish Women's Franchise League explain how they are able to justify such a crime against society as census evasion, he was met with a volley of responses. <clears throat> Mary F. Earle, a leading member of the IWFL, outlined the thinking that underpinned the boycotters' actions. Um, she wrote, women have not votes and therefore are unable to bring influence of this sort to bear. Hence they are forced to adopt a method less conventional than that used by men. The census is a numbering of the people. We are considered part of the people by the government when it wants to tax us or to count us. 
We are quite willing to be part of the people as regards the census when we are allowed to be part of the people as regards the parliamentary vote. Ireland continued, we quite recognise the importance of the census, but we are sure that this, the statistics obtained by it will be used as a basis of legislation on matters affecting women by a House of Commons consisting of men only and elected by men only. As laws passed by such a body cannot hardly fail to be unjust to women, we consider we are quite justified in our refusal to supply information. Um, this was not necessarily a position shared by all Irish suffragists. The biographer of Hannah Sheehy Skeffington and the foremost historian of the IWFL, Margaret Ward, has suggested that evading or resisting the census was a matter upon which militants and non-militants agreed. However, some moderate supporters of, female of this female suffrage cause were openly critical of the protest. In the aftermath of the census on the 20th of April, uh, the Dean of Waterford chaired a suffrage meeting in that city but took the opportunity to state that the census was for the good of the whole community, for the good of the state. Avoiding the census was, an un was unworthy of a good citizen. If you might put the matter in a nutshell, it was simply this. Women claimed that they should have their full rights as citizens. Here they had all events, one right as citizens. Carmel Quinlan, the biographer of Hannah and Thomas Haslam, the leading lights in the moderate Irish Women's Suffrage and Local Government Association, has noted a resolution passed by the committee of that organisation at its meeting in March. This stated that the committee would not give any support to the movement for refusing to fill up the census, as actions would, the, such actions would vitiate the returns for the next 10 years. Um, in the days leading up to the census, the press and the authorities in Ireland were curious about the methods that the Irish suffragists committed to resisting the census would adopt. The Freeman's Journal reported that in Dublin, speculation as to the suffragists had approached, had approach, sorry, the suffragists' approach had imported an element of mild excitement into the census taking. This speculation was sustained because, <clears throat> the reporter of the Freeman continued, quote, in refutation of the popular belief that, li that a lady cannot keep a secret, they seem to have guarded their plans successfully. In Britain, the Women's uh, Freedom League and the WSPU planned very public resistance. They organised a series of collective, collective public protests on census night, facilitating suffragists' absence from home or any other residence where they might be counted. In London, for example, the Pankhursts attended a concert at WSPU Hall, followed by a protest march at Trafalgar Square, attended by around 1,000 women, followed by further entertainments laid on at the Scala Theatre before concluding at the night by going to Aldwych skating rink between 3 a.m. and 8 a.m. Inter interestingly, some of the suffragette suffragettes of Birmingham spent the night at the Gaelic League Hall there. When a policeman called upon a committee meeting of the IWFL in Dublin on the day before the census and asked if they intended holding a meeting on the following evening, he was informed that they did not, but instead had requisitioned a number of aeroplanes and submarines for the occasion. 